and thank you to I don't know if I do thank uh, to have this title because finally we can spend I think uh, three days about that scientific and policy momentum. I don't know if there is a real momentum at all, but uh, I will I will try. So to begin uh, my disclosure of interest as consultant or invitation for Congress. As everybody, I said, my conflict of interest, it's mainly with my parents, in fact. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm sorry, but I, I, I need to, 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 to begin by this. I know you, you know that, but we have to remind these things that to decide to be vaccinated, fi finally, you have to deal with the disease and the complication of the disease. You have to know about the vaccine, of course, efficacy, effectiveness of the, of the vaccine, but also of the ratio in between this and the ad adverse drug reaction. Uh, and finally, at individual level, it's the perception of that things and of all these things, disease, complication and vaccine that, that will go until the fact that will, you will vaccinate or not. You and your children and perhaps your parents later. Uh, but when you look at the collective point of view, uh, you have to go inside and we will discuss a bit about, about that at the end of my talk, about the cost-effectiveness ratio. And you will see that it can modify completely uh, the results of science finally, and perhaps made a bit of disturbance or confusion in the aid of media, and finally, perhaps, go until the confusion at individual level. So keep in mind this uh, for the first time. So my summary will be uh, trying to say something about healthy aging. I'm quite a novice philosopher, but I need to, to uh, uh, say something about what is healthy aging or active aging. And after give you some scientific uh, evidence and perhaps some evidence about policy. I don't know if there is any at the end. Uh, healthy aging, I would say that it's general concept. General concept here also it's an individual perception, in fact, to be healthy. You can be very disabled, finally, and feel that you are healthy or healthier than another person the, of the same age or chronically chronological age. Uh, so it's, an, it, it's a perception of his own aging from the definition of well-being and health. And when you look at the uh, uh, healthy aging, it changed for the, for the years. And uh, 50 years ago, WHO uh, didn't say anything about uh, quality of life. They don't say it's not to have any disease. Now it's not to have any disease or uh, deal with disease, and they, d they decided to give this uh, uh, this definition. Healthy aging is a process of optimi optimizing up to opportunities for physical, social, and mental health to enable to enable people to be active. For me, it's quite uh, strange this, but to be active without discrimination and to enjoy an independent, independent, and a good quality of life. And you see, this is a concept. It's not an outcome. It's not a parameter that you will measure. It's quite difficult. And when you look at the quality of life, finally the first scores used in health uh, would have been uh, used by uh, uh, people. It's, it's by economists, in fact and not by uh, doctors. Uh, you have to keep in mind something about what is aging. It's very, uh, it's very small, but uh, you have a bidirectional impact in between social, environmental, economical, spiritual, psychological events, which will be a part of your aging, but you will act at collective level in society uh, as you age. And finally, you see, diseases and biological aging is a small part of the thing. And when you look at all these parts, and I'm sure that Martin Sinclair would say the same thing of me, uh, that social and environmental factors are the main to feel uh, healthier. So, and the second thing I want to stress is active. 
Uh, as I said, I, I'm quite novice in philosophy, but uh, I'm not sure that people who are healthy want to be active. What does it mean, active? It means that uh, you need to participate to economy or not, or decided not to participate. So be careful when you, when you talk about healthy aging and when you talk about active and healthy aging. I can stop my talk here, but I will follow a bit. Um, one thing which has been already stressed by uh, uh, Martin this, mo this morning is about heterogeneity. He, he, he told us about biological aging and about uh, chronological aging. Of course, it's not the same, but even if you are in France, even if you are in Europe, ever, even in, in uh, high resources uh, countries, you will have this can, uh, this kind of things from healthy to pathologic or disabled aging. And in between you have this quite uh, concept and now we have an, uh, an operational uh, uh, definition of frailty. And you can go from this to this. At your age, you need some years, you need disease, you need severe disease, but when you are 90 years old, you can go from this to this in only one hospitalization for flu. I will, I will say to you. Um, this is to stress uh, also what is aging and what is an, a very old pop, uh, population. I would say people who are 80s plus or 90s plus. Finally, they have uh, a kind of number of unexpected complication. What I said, only flu can go from this to this because after only the second or the third days of flu, you can have healthcare associated infection, you can have false, you can have iatrogenic events with oseltamivir or antibiotics you, you give to your patient. You can have immobilization syndromes with pressure sores and you can have delirium. All these things leads to disability. That's the trigger, it's only one, and at the end you become uh, disabled. So, uh, another place. So, if I have to say a small take-home message about uh, healthy aging, only at medical and biological level, it's less acute disease and less severe acute disease. Nobody tell an, anything about the, the level of severity. It's not the same to have a, a, a small disease or a severe disease, and it, it's more true about chronic diseases. Chronic disease, uh, Martin say, uh, say, uh, told us this morning that we have uh, some curve about chronic disease, ischemic, uh, in cardiac insufficiency, etc. But uh, the level of severity is uh, quite important. And to be healthy, it's less acute, less chronic, but less severe diseases. Less disability, and disability is mainly associated with diseases. I would say uh, a bit with aging, but... Uh, much more in, uh, uh, associated with diseases, and less frailty also. So all this factor is the definition I, I, I can give to you about healthy aging, but at medical and biological level, not about the other factors. And I don't know the links in between these factors and the other, so be careful. Um, what are the evidence now about the impact of infectious disease or vaccine Preventable disease, this is one I will take uh, as example, pneumococcus, influenza, and zoster, uh, and the role of vaccine about that. Uh, you know that pneumococcal disease is a very, very huge disease, and uh, it's mainly, it's not a pediatric disease, it's a uh, geriatric disease now with a, a number and a very high number of, of uh, patient with pneumococcal diseases. Uh, when you look at uh, only community acquired pneumonia, it's 20 to 50 percent, it's one million of hospitalization in Europe. When you look at the mortality rate, it's a very uh, large amount, but when you look at this in, uh, uh, in the population in between 65 and 75, it's already 15 percent, and when you go up with age, it's 
higher than 80 years old, you are at 30% of death after uh, three months. So it means it's not like uh, William Osler said, that it was a very good disease because you will die very fast. It's the, he, he, he felt that, but he, he, uh, after some years, he decided to, to come back because he looked at people and finally he said, it's terrific because it gives you disability. Finally, he died from that three months after a pneumococcal pneumonia. Uh, and finally, yes, we have data to say that community acquired pneumonia and healthcare associated pneumonia cause disability. Occurrence, new disability, but also increasing disability in people who, who live in nursing home or even at home with disability. So keep this in mind. What about influenza? Ah, this year it was fantastic. A lot, lot, lot of new, uh, new places in, in nursing home in France. 20, 24,000 deaths, excess deaths this year. The calculation uh, by epidemiology, uh, epidemiologic uh, people say that it's probably 15,000 uh, uh, because of flu. But it's direct and indirect, and it has been already stressed. Uh, in Europe, probably, with the Euromomo uh, website, uh, you can look at this. It's more than 90,000 additional deaths in two months. The other thing is flu, and it's, there is only two studies in, uh, at my knowledge. Uh, but per perhaps overs, uh, overs, but I, I, I didn't know. Um, these two describe how uh, a, a small percentage of people, it's in between 20 and 30 percent of people who experiment, old people who experiment flu will be disabled after. So it means that one out of three will be disabled after the flu episode. And here it's quite the same. It's a small, uh, a small study uh, uh, looking at the uh, ADL, activity daily life decline. So the functionality is affected by the flu, of course, depending on complication after the flu. We just finished uh, uh, a study, a national study in France, uh, where out of 515 uh, patients hospitalized in a different area, in infectious, infectiologist uh, world, geriatric world, uh, we saw that nearly 70, between 50 and 70 percent have a complication, such as cardiac insufficiency, delirium, um, bacterial infection, stroke, cardiac ischemia, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so it means that it's very, very important. Um, Zoster, does it arms? It has been already stressed by uh, Tino, and thank you. But what I would add, it's in, in, in France, and I think everywhere in, in the world, one out of four people or five will experiment Zoster. It means it takes time, but you will experiment. And I'm sure you're right, you know, Everybody, everybody knows what is Zoster, but unfortunately, doctors in France, and I think quite everywhere in Europe and the world, they don't know. Why? They don't know because each year, a GP in France see, usually sees only two or three Zoster. Out of that, only one out of five will experiment uh, uh, neuro, uh, neuralgia after the, the zoster. Meaning that for him, as an incidence, it's not a problem for his practice. Be sure that what is important is not the patient, it's your practice. It means that if, if it's boring for you, you will take care of it. But if it's not boring, if, it, if it's not difficult to manage, you can, you can go through it, it's not so important. We, we are just experiment, uh, uh, we have just the result, but I, I, I do not have the result. We just finished the, uh, the, the survey 
on 300 G GPs in France to examine if they uh, know really something about zoster and if they perceive the severity of a disease for old population. Of course, if you are 50 or less, you have less chance to have post-herpetic neuralgia. And if you are more you age, more you have severe zoster, acute zoster, and more you experiment uh, post-herpetic neuralgia. This means that at the end, herpes uh, zoster related, related pains affect functional impact. And it has been really, and it was a very good job of uh, Mr. Schmader, Dr. Schmader from United States, who uh, built a score, a specific scores to uh, m measure the link in between the zoster-related pain and the activity daily life. And it's why uh, you will see uh, later that uh, it has been measured during the Chingle prevention study. So the second take-home message is, Influenza, pneumococcal disease, and zoster affect all these things in, uh, in older population, and particularly something, acceleration, occurrence of functional decline. I don't know if it's healthy aging, but it's disability at, at the mean. Um, I, uh, we have some guidance about uh, vaccination at European level. And for flu, it's quite clear. We think and we establish that there was a, a real impact of uh, uh, flu influenza vaccine, decreasing lethal and non-lethal complication, reduce uh, ELI, and ver ver uh, real uh, confirmed uh, flu. And of course, complication. This has been quite clearly demonstrated, even if in Cochrane database review some uh, uh, epidemiological uh, persons think differently. But at the end, the guidance at European level said we need it to decrease these things. But look, nothing about the prevention of disability. It has not been proven at scientific level that flu vaccine decreased disability. It decreased death, it decreased cardiac ischemic strokes, it decreased rate of uh, pneumonia, complicate pneumonia, but it doesn't de decrease disability in older. But it has done, it has not been studied, in fact. That's why. Uh, what about uh, PPV23 or PCV13? Okay, PPV23, PCV13. I, I, I will not take it a lot of time about that, but it works. It works, it, 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 and it works very, very well at the end because we have a lot of people with that. Even if it works half times, I think it's good. It's good at individual level. I don't know at collective level. We will discuss further. But if you look at all the, all the thing, it decreased prevention of all cause pneumonia of invasive uh, pneumococcal disease, but Nothing again about disability. <coughs> so vaccination against pneumonia, against pneumococcus, decrease death-related pneumonia, death-related IPD, but not disability. But it has not been studied. What about zoster? And the only, it's the only vaccine which has proven this. And you will see how, how it's difficult to be old. Uh, because... Uh, when you look at, at these, and it was uh, from in the, the study from a pool analysis from G Chingle prevention studies and over after, but if you look at the herpes zona in incidence, in each group it decreased, but very less here, only 20% of 80. If you look at the incidence of post herpetic neuralgia, it works, it works, it works less. It's what it works not enough for politicians. And here, because of the work of Schmader, they look at the impact of vaccine. If it works as a parameter, we can decrease the functional decline. And it's yes. And really everywhere.
in each age group. It's the same, nearly the same. If you are 80 plus, you receive Zoster vaccine. Perhaps you will have the, Zos the Zoster, acute Zoster. One out of two risk to have a post therapeutic neuralgia, but with less impact on your activity daily life. Meaning at individual level, it means something, I think. Remember that, we'll discuss further. So, take on message three, it's ID decreased dramatically healthy aging. Vaccine decreased direct and indirect short and long-term mortality associated with ill. And Zoster vaccine is the only one, and the new also, I can say that now, I imagine, but it has not been proven. But with Zoster vaccine, it has been proven. An impact on uh, to prevent disability associated Zoster. This is the only scientific evidence we have. What about policies now? Is there evidence? The European guidelines are quite clear. You need to vaccinate from tita for tetanus, diphtheria, pertussis, according to outbreak, but after 65 years. Flu vaccine, after 65 years. PCV uh, 13 and after one year PPV 23 for everybody uh, 65 plus. And herpes zoster vaccine, all people 50 plus. This is the guidance, but very different recommendation. And thank you, Tino, I, not the slide, you uh, show us how it was different from country to another. And I will give you an explanation of that. What about flu? It's so, so evident for flu. But we have, in between 2008 and 2014, uh, small differences, but at all. In some countries, it's 50 plus. In some countries, it's 60, 65 plus. In some countries, it's only high risk person. I'm not, if I'm not uh, a doctor, if I'm not an epidemiologist, if I'm not an economist, I say, what is different from uh, Ireland and France? What is different? Why the, the recommendations are not the same? It's, it's, it's the same disease for the same age group? Why it's so different? And r looking, perhaps it's, it's, it's funny, here, healthcare workers. <coughs> About healthcare workers, it's 100 rate member set recommended vaccine for all healthcare workers. There is no a single study proven that healthcare workers vaccination works in acute care, in any acute care. There is no a single studies. There is only there are only three studies in nursing home. I'm quite proud about about that because it's the older population who help the youngest population in this case, but uh, there is no l a single study, but everybody recommend it. And now it's 100% everywhere from 2000. I, I think it's a good idea. I don't say that it's not a good idea. It's, we just talk about evidence. So we have no study, but we recommend it. We have a lot of study, but we not recommend it everywhere. Uh, what about the flu vaccine coverage? In front of this recommendation, this is difficult to, to see, but it, it's in between 2000, so all the black or is 2008-9, and the very, very uh, blue is uh, 2014 and vaccine coverage. What you can see, dramatic decrease everywhere. Out of UK, it's stable in all UK. We have some explanation if we can discuss about that. But it's, it's stable. It's not, so far, it's not so fantastic as you see here. But it's, it's nearly the target, the, the, the double H uh, target. Look in France. In France, it was from that, we were 68% in 2008. Look at 2015. It's here. It's recommendation for AFI. It means it decreases every year. Vaccine hesitancy. Explanation about vaccine hesitancy. Uh, 
I don't know anything about uh, about cars and how works the cars and how if Volkswagen is better than a Renault or a Peugeot, etc. But if I'm not a, a, a real, if a people say the the car from Renault is different in France than in Germany, I say why? They said it's the same. It's the Clio, or a, I don't know. But it, it's quite strange. So it means that people don't. Uh, don't forget that people in between 2008 and 2050, the number of computers, the number of link with internet has a tenfold increase. Meaning that people that, uh, are in internet 10 times more in between 2008 and 2015. Looking at something about vaccine hearing about adverse drug effect, mainly. Uh, but this is a, a fantastic study. The impact of European vaccine policy on seasonal influenza vaccine. And it's uh, the, the team of Thomas uh, Sucks who performed it. And uh, I think you cannot read, but uh, he, he took, uh, they took all the uh, policy you can put inside uh, uh, um, to improve vaccine coverage. It's, is it recommended for all these countries recommended? Uh, is there a national objective per year for flu? And you see that not everywhere. Uh, is there a monitoring of vaccine coverage rate? Not everywhere, but mainly. Uh, is there, uh, for healthcare worker, financial incentive? Not everywhere, but a bit. Is there a reimbursement of vaccine between 90 and 100 percent? And you see nearly everywhere. Is there a letter for fee flu vaccine? Not everywhere, but quite, quite well everywhere. So is there uh, any uh, campaigns, national campaigns, local campaigns? They put all these things and try to see if there is one uh, policy which is much better than another. What we look, if you took this one, only one element, at the end, look that only the fact you receive a personal later vo voucher for free flu vaccine works. But much more interesting, it's, is there an increasing in between all these countries, uh, increasing with uh, the addition of several uh, uh, elements. And look, the best is to uh, fly her everywhere and to receive a later venture and to be reimbursed. And this is quite weight, uh, quite correlate uh, with the fact to be, to be vaccinated. 0 0.82, meaning that it explains 50, nearly 40% of the fact to be vaccinated or not. The others are over, of course. But you look, the best association is in France. And finally, in France it decreases, meaning that it explains a lot of things. You can put all the things or all organizational things you want. Finally, there is Still, there are still many hesitancy. It means that there are over factors. One over factors is what I said before, cost effectiveness analysis. We want to use money, but in a real way <coughs> or a good way. I don't know what is good way. Good is not to spend a lot of money, I think. If you look here, I don't know if you look very well, but if you if you see very well, but uh, the same based on the same study. We have not the same health care uh, uh, institutes, of course, but look with the same models, you can uh, imagine that quality cost. Uh, I don't remember at all. One moment, I think it was in between three six thousand till more than 35,000 euro for each year, for each Kali. Incredible the difference. 
six times. And it's why after you have different recommendation. In UK, it's in between 70 and 79. In France, it's, it's, it's in between 65 and 74. Remember what I saw, what, 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 what I show you about the effect, efficacy of, the, or even the effectiveness, because it has been also uh, uh, demonstrated in real life, the effectiveness of Zoster vaccine on ADL. Here we discuss about active and healthy aging. So on ADL, you are 80 plus, we have data to say at individual level, it can be interesting. But at national level, we decided, policy decided not to reimburse. I let you think about that. Finally, there is no problem. Is there any problem in the United States with flu vaccination? In some states, we decided to be mandatory. Look, when it's mandatory, we have no problem of vaccine coverage. Be crazy, look, even in France. When it's recommended, you are here for healthcare worker. And when it's mandatory, no problem. I don't say that we need to change all the thing and make mandatory all the vaccine. I just say, when you want, you can do it. So my last take home message is enough policy. I think there is a high heterogeneity of policies drive finally to no policies. That the main recommendation to improve vaccine coverage are known. We make a lot of studies, we know how to, to do it. So finally, we need, I think there is a real need for a strong political willingness, much more of this, and to structure, to put together all stakeholders, I think, as I, I think we are here, taking all the, the things together, risk, benefits, surveillance, feedback, and finally, if we, we have all the things in, in our end, we can discuss with media. And media didn't say anything else. Thank you for your attention.